The PlayStation was a landmark system, but its games haven't aged particularly well. I mean, if you don't mind pixelation, default graphics should be fine, I suppose. But the beauty of emulation is that you can tweak just about everything, including the graphics. Do you want those jaggies gone? Go for it. You want scan lines? You can do it. Why replicate the console when you can improve on it? There's no limits to what you can do. That's the beauty of emulation. And in this video, I will show you how I personally play PS1 games using DuckStation. But before I start, let me show you what to expect if you make the same tweaks to the graphics. I have made a proper duct station installation guide already, and you can watch it right here. This video is more concerned with my graphical settings. The first thing you'll notice is my choice of renderer, which is Vulkan, and it should always be your first choice. It has way better performance than any other renderer, so just enable it. As for internal resolution, going above five times is somewhat redundant, so don't go any higher. There is no hard or fast rule for the other settings. Texture filtering is always tricky to get right, but after experimenting for some time, I feel like the graphics are more or less to my liking now. You can just copy what I did if you want the same result. It's highly recommended to enable PGXP geometry correction since PS1 textures become very uneven without it. From there, you can head over to the PGXP tab and enable the same settings. After hours of testing, I've concluded that these are the most compatible. Under post-processing, I added three shaders. I found that they worked well together. And if you watch the showcase, you will understand what I'm talking about. Duck Station has been good for a while, but implementing widescreen was a bit iffy sometimes. I'm not saying all PS1 games suddenly work with widescreen, because that is not the case. But it certainly has improved since I last tried it. I would suggest that you enable it on a per-game basis, though. Using Dino Crisis as an example, I can change its visuals by right-clicking its profile and selecting its properties. Making changes this way will only affect Dino Crisis and none of the other games in my library. Please note that I've already changed the aspect ratio to 16 by 9 and enabled widescreen rendering. Now, let me remind you again that widescreen patches are not always recommended. Any game with pre-rendered backgrounds will just become stretched if you use it. Before I go, 
there's a high probability that you don't have all the shaders shown in this video. If you're interested in acquiring them, I have the link below. Once you have it downloaded, go into your DuckStation folder and extract the resources inside. Just overwrite when prompted. Alright, I hope you guys found this video instructive. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.